Hey, it's Mr. Lineski. We are looking at section two of unit nine. I'm going to start talking about quadrilaterals now. Specifically, uh, this section deals with just parallelograms. So let's figure out what a parallelogram all entails. Um, a parallelogram is a special type of quadrilateral. Remember, quadrilateral means it has four sides. Um, and it meets these specific properties. So it's really, really important that you know the specific properties that make a parallelogram, because this is going to continue on um, sort of through the rest of the unit. So um, ooh, our first property is that um, opposite sides are congruent. So in a parallelogram, parallelogram kind of looks something like this. So in a parallelogram, it is true that the opposite sides are congruent to each other. Uh, meaning this side's equal to this side and this one's equal to that one. Um, it is also true that opposite sides are parallel, hence the name parallelogram. So as a reminder, these arrows indicate parallel. These dashes indicate that they're equal to each other. Um, so those are two properties that deal with sides. The opposite sides are congruent. The opposite sides are parallel. The angles, uh, the opposite angles are congruent. So what that means in a parallelogram, I can say that this angle is congruent to this angle, and that these two angles are also congruent to each other. So remember, opposite means that they sort of go diagonally across from each other. Uh, the other one is that the same side interior angles are supplementary. So that kind of looks like this. Ooh, I don't like that one. That one looks kind of yucky. Um, basically, it means that these sides here, or these angles, excuse me, these two angles here would add up to equal 180, and these two angles here would also add up to equal 180. So same side interiors have to add up to 180. For the diagonals, you should know that the diagonals bisect each other. Now, it doesn't mean that the diagonals are the same length. It just means that they cut each other in half. So these two pieces would be equal, and these two pieces would be equal. But again, they do not have to be the same length. So like this diagonal, if it's 10, doesn't mean that this diagonal is 10. It could be a different number. And then the last property is if I take one diagonal across a parallelogram, um, it will create two, con or, yeah, sorry, two congruent triangles. So we know that these sides are congruent, and then we can use a reflexive property and say, hey, those two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So those are our properties. Um, some other quick things is um, when we draw that diagonal, because the opposite angles are congruent and parallel, we can still look at things like alternate interior angles all that fun stuff from back in the day. So let's take a look at an example problem on sort of how we would solve some stuff here. Um, it says, given parallelogram ABCD, uh, solve for the following. So I'm assuming this is ABCD. Um, we know it's a parallelogram, so we know all of the properties of a parallelogram meet. So what does that mean? That means we can say things like opposite sides are congruent. So to solve for y, set those two things equal to each other. y equals 6. Done. How do we solve for x? Well, opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. So we can set those two things equal to each other. Subtract 21 from both sides, and we get x equals 39. Whoops, not degrees. Just 39. Um, okay, uh, here's just another example problem. It says, uh, given parallelogram w, x, y, z, solve for the variables. So this one looks a bit chaotic, uh, but again, the properties, you just kind of need to focus on the properties. Uh, so we'll kind of start what I think is easiest. Opposite sides are uh, congruent, so we can say 4r equals 18. Divide both sides by 4, we get that r is equal to 4.5. Oh no, I got a decimal. That's okay. No big deal. We can get decimals still. Um, here, the uh, S part, that's referring to these diagonal pieces. So we know that the diagonals get bisected in a parallelogram. 
So we can say 8s equals 7s plus 3. Subtract 7s from both sides, and we get s equals 3. Pretty easy. Uh, and then the last one, a little bit tricky. 2t is pointing to this piece right here. And if you notice, we have two angles here, 18 and 40. One of those we're going to use. The other one is just there to kind of throw us off. Uh, so we're actually looking for the alternate interior angle. So remember, if these lines are parallel, alternate interior would be this angle and this angle. So we could say that 2t equals 18. Divide both sides by 2, we get t is equal to 9. Here's another uh, type of problem. It's called uh, coordinate geometry, where you kind of put stuff on a coordinate plane. Um, so we have three vertices of, when you see this symbol here, uh, it sort of means parallelogram. That's the shorthand for parallelogram. Um, so we're told that it's parallelogram A, B, C, D. Um, and so we're going to plot these three points. And we want to find the coordinate of where would point D go um, in order to make this thing a parallelogram. So negative 1, 0, that's A. B is at 0, negative 4, that's B. C is at 2, 2. And so this thing has to go in order. It has to go A, B, C. And so we know that D should sort of be up in this area here. Um, and so in order to make this thing a parallelogram, the easiest way, there's lots and lots of different approaches. Some of them involve distance formula. Uh, the easiest, I think, is slope. Um, that we want to basically mimic slope. Because if you remember, we said that the opposite sides are parallel. So I'm going to find the slope from B to C. And then I'm going to mimic that and go A to D. So from B to C, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and write 1, 2. So I'm going to do the same thing. Go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and write 1, 2. So right here, that's where point D would be. And then when I connect that, that gives me parallelogram A, B, C, D. There's another type of problem that we can see. Um, and it asks you, you know, is this thing a quadrilateral? How do we prove something's a quadrilateral? So there are six ways we can prove something is a quadrilateral. Uh, the first way is to show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Um, so if I give you a figure and it looks like this, we can say, yes, indeed, that's a parallelogram. Uh, show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So if I give you a figure that looks like this, you can say that that's a parallelogram show that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So if I give you a figure and I tell you that these are congruent, you can say, yes, that's a parallelogram. If I show you that all the same side interior angles are supplementary, meaning I show you that this and this add up to 180, this and this add up to 180, this and this add up to 180, and these two things add up to 180, then that thing is a parallelogram. I can show you that both diagonals get bisected. So if a figure is marked like this, you can say, yes, it's a parallelogram. And then the last one's kind of odd. You can show that one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So what that looks like, there's kind of two ways you can do it, is if I show you that this or if I show you this. So I show you uh, that one pair of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So again, parallel are the arrows, congruent is that. Uh, so if that happens, I can say, yes, that's a parallelogram. So here are some example problems where we sort of would use that. Uh, it says, determine whether there's enough information to classify the quadrilateral as a parallelogram. So this figure here, can we state that's a parallelogram? Yes, because both pairs of sides are equal to each other, or are congruent, actually. Sorry, I forgot the little squiggle. Uh, this figure here, can we state that that's a parallelogram? 
No, because we only have one pair of sides marked parallel. And again, when it comes to sides being parallel, I either need both pairs to be parallel, or I need one pair to be parallel and congruent. And so since this is not marked congruent, I can't assume that. Uh, and then this last one here, can I state that this is a parallelogram? No, because only one diagonal is getting bisected. All right. Um, last problem here, these are your try it uh, questions. So you're basically filling in the missing angles here. Uh, you're going to use some stuff like vertical angles, linear pairs, triangles add up to equal 180, uh, vertical angles, you're going to use that opposite uh, angles are congruent to each other. You're going to use all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that's your try it question. And that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.